<clears throat> like I was saying, under the sex steroids that will be part of this cortex system, um, very little estrogen. Okay, like I said, that's going to mostly be the ovaries working. Now, for the androgens, they are controlled by the ACTH from the hypothalamus. The ACTH, of course, was also controlling the cortisol. Now, the major androgen is DHEA, <laughs> um, dehydroepiandrosterone. Yeah, say that a couple of times. But have you heard of this one? I've seen that a lot. You've seen that a lot. Anyone else seen it a lot? Um, uh, in, in any way? I can't remember where. I just know I've seen it a lot. Yeah. It's one of those that we look at and we go, okay, well, um, I've seen that. I've heard that. Blah, 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 blah. Medication commercials and like their warning signs. Exactly. And so, you know, that's why I love marketing. Okay, because marketing will give you something that's kind of catchy, but then they don't really explain what it is, and they're like, oh, well, you know, it'll help this or help that, and not really be like, well, what is it? I, I don't know what it is. Tell me what it is. Okay, this one, it is needed because tissues of the body that can will convert it to a potent form of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Now, this means that it's important for males. One of the ways that you have probably seen this, it is associated with like, um, I think baby formulas. Okay, uh, you might see that it says it's a good source of DHEA or beneficial to the brain for this or something like that. So it's important for male fetus development and the male reproductive tract. Now, at puberty, these androgens in both sexes are going to play a part in secondary sex characteristics. So think about like the changing of the voice, the uh, pubic and axillary hair, those types of things, those secondary sex characteristics. The estrogen from the cortex area, okay, estradiol. However, the quantity is so small when compared to the ovaries, but after menopause, it is our only source of estrogen along with the fat in the body. People always wonder why I don't have wrinkles. And I tell them, because I've kept my fat cells full. And, you know, they'll be like, what? It's because the fat cells, and, you know, now that I'm way past that 50 point, okay, and I'm like, I've still got estrogen in my body. You know, everybody laughs at me. But I, I, it's, you know, it's supposed to be fun. So um, it's my way of keeping estrogen. Now, this adrenal gland, do you guys, okay, now, if you take a peek at this structure, <clears throat> the medulla region, okay, now the cortex, and like I said, it is very different in its structure. So when you are looking at it under a scope, it is very identifiable to have one, two, three layers present. So, this gland, believe it or not, in the time of development, egg and sperm meet, fertilization occurs, one cell becomes two, two becomes four, they're actually independent of each other. But 
they're connected. And one, okay, we need one to have the other and, and, and back and forth. So each one stimulates the other because without cortisol, the medulla would atrophy. Some of the cells of the medulla extend into the cortex. When we get a stress reaction, okay, stress activates the sympathetic nervous system. If I have a connection of some of these cells extending into the cortex, that tells me that this medulla will affect the cortical regions. So even though they seem to act independent, they are dependent upon each other. <clears throat> so sympathetic mostly for the medulla, hormonal endocrine for the cortex region. That's our lovely adrenal gland. <clears throat> the next gland we're going to talk about is the pancreas. Very important, all right? Um, the pancreas, located just below and behind the stomach, secretes digestive juices. This would be its <clears throat> exocrine function, which if you look at the histology of the pancreas, that's the majority of it, okay? Now, the endocrine portion, <clears throat> that is where if you look at the histology, like a cross section through it, we have these islands that exist in its structure. That's what an isolate means, okay? An isolate means an island. So located throughout the structure are these isolates. Now, <clears throat> they're going to contain two types of cells. And then this one that's very not high in number at all, the delta, the majority of them are the alpha and the beta cells. These islands, the cells that exist, the hormones regulate glycemia. Glycemia means blood glucose concentrations. Known anybody who has diabetes? Type 1, type 2. All right, these are the areas that are affected. Okay, these little isolates. Under normal conditions, these areas react or respond to nutrient levels in the blood, meaning those glucose levels in the blood. Now, do you happen to know what insulin does at the cellular level? Stabilizes. <clears throat> something with the glucose, sugars? Now, under normal conditions, the goal is taking in the foodstuffs, getting it through the system, cells getting glucose they need, what we don't need, short-term storage to last to the next meal, and then if it needs to go into long-term long -term storage, go into the fat cells. The way that it should work with the help of insulin, okay? At the cell, 
it's almost like insulin acts like a key that will unlock that cell's ability for that glucose to come in and work. Under normal conditions, that's what happens. Okay? If we don't use it all, it'll go into short-term storage. Glycogen, does everybody remember glycogen? Okay? And then long-term storage becoming part of the fat cells. Okay? The goal, okay, <clears throat> the goal is making sure that 24-7 glucose levels are pretty much normal throughout the body. Why? Definitely, I mean, definitely for homeostasis. But why glucose? You need it for your nervous system? The only source of energy for the nervous system, i.e., especially the brain, is glucose. The goal, when y'all cover chapter 26, in part one, the digestive system, you talked about the food stuff that you brought in, and you had all those gut brain peptides, the hormones, okay? The goal was to maintain from meal to meal, and then for that long period of time when you had from dinner to breakfast. So, the pancreas, now if we're looking at this organ, okay, those alpha cells, which if you look back at the picture, the ones that they're trying to show in this pink red color, the blue being my beta cells. Alpha cells, which are pretty good in number, their hormone is glucagon. This is what will get secreted between meals. So if blood levels drop for the <coughs> glucose, that hormone acts on the liver. And what it does, glycogenolysis, short-term storage of glucose, is done in the liver and skeletal muscle cells in the form of glycogen. What is that term right there? Do y'all see glycogen in there? Mm -hmm. Which is simply a glucose molecule that has been stored in the liver or the skeletal muscle cells. What does it mean to lice? Break, up. Break it up. So basically, go get that glucose. So from breakfast to lunch, if I'm using more glucoses than I gave to my body, okay, and my body says, hold up, need a little bit more, the alpha will go to the liver, and first thing they'll do is look for the glycogen and say, come on, let's go to work, and hopefully it will. It can also do gluconeogenesis. <clears throat> this would be, genesis meaning new, okay, uh, the beginning. So therefore,